Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check this out. It is the Xiaomi Fimi X8 SE drone that everybody's been waiting for. Super excited. This just came in and I've been really hoping to see a competitor to the Mavic Pro and also the Autel Evo have been pretty much the best kind of thousand dollar range and under 4K compact drone that have kind of a upwards of 20 a minute flight time. We're gonna unbox it in this video, take a really close up look at it, see how the fit and finish is, and just all the options, see what all the options are. Put it up on our phone or tablet, see how the uh, boot up process is, the installation, and also some of the updates go, and how the FPV looks like on the screen. And then in future reviews, coming up very soon, we're gonna do flight testing, we're gonna do range testing, and also see what kind of cinematic video we can get and pictures, like I usually do in all my reviews. So if you're not subscribed already, definitely subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and blow it out of the water, do as much as I can with it because we really need to see if this is the next best thing compared to the two guys back there. So I have not even unboxed this guy yet. I just want to show you the other side before we rip it open. It's basically the same thing folded up. You see how that looks folded up? And that's really all there is to the box, nothing else. It's just a pretty plain Jane box. Uh, it's just got kind of a cheaper made box because this is shooting for the affordable yet very capable market. So they didn't spend much money on the outside packaging it looks like. This one does 4K recording at 100 megabits per second. That's pretty awesome. That's up there with the, I believe the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Air can do that. Three axis mechanical gimbal sta stabilization. Folding portable design as you can see all the legs fold in kind of like a Mavic. It's got the smart tracking and and smart flight so similar to some of the other advanced drones five kilometers of range out of the box is what they're saying so that should be pretty awesome 33 minutes of flight time is what they're claiming we are gonna put this through the test you can guarantee in the flight test precision vision positioning system so it also is supposed to have sensors on the bottom so very comparable to some of the newer drones out in this price range of course this is a lot cheaper so enough talking about it guys let's go ahead and take out the knife and unbox this thing as you can see i have not even cut this sticker at all yet so go ahead and do that as soon as possible let's get this open quick because we want to see this thing man wow here we go so there it is um, when we initially open it up if you can let me get the camera up a little bit here you can see how we have this little placard on the back of the box and it's kind of a uh, packing list with a QR code for scanning for the app. Getting back to the main event, here it is guys. This is it, the Femi X8. Uh, we got instruction manuals here, two of them. We have the controller. Now again, this is a, an affordable uh, drone. This only cost me $400 in the pre-order. I think they're about $500 if you didn't pre-order it. Well, we're gonna look at this stuff more in depth in just a second. I'm just gonna take everything out of the box, get the box clear. We've got our cabling, three types of cable, USB type C, micro USB, and a lightning connector with the regular USB on the other side. Power brick, there's our little connector for charging the battery, very simple. Figure eight club plugs to plug into your wall. I'm in the US, so I got the US adapter and that plugs right into the back of that power brick. Only thing left on this side is a full set of propellers. Actually, no, we got three extra propellers. So I hope there's more in there because I only have three here. And let's get this drone out of here. A little bit of a handle grip, we'll pull that open. And yes, there's more propellers in the bottom. So another set of three. So it looks like you're gonna have a set and a half. That's it in the box. This bottom piece doesn't come open, so we'll throw that on the side. And we wanna check out the Femi X8. Looking really good. Man, just really have been waiting for this, really anticipating this for this thing to come out and get shipped in here. So we got the arms that fold straight out, so there's no like downward locking. They just pull straight out. I'm hearing a little click on some of them. Yeah, there's a little click. Very, very similar. I like that tension. You see how it pulls back and it springs out just like the Mavic. So you're never gonna have the instance where it's just partially really pulled out. So you don't have to worry about that. 
Little motors here. There's no branding on the motors, but they look like they're very light aluminum belled brushless motors. There's a spring right on top there. So you have to pull out the bottom first and you have to put the bottom in uh, last. So that's the way that's unfolding. There's the battery. Press that thing once and we have a half charge battery. Perfect. There is their logo there. I guess that's the Femi logo now they're using. You know what I'm noticing is check out the way these motors are sitting. They're tilted a little bit inwards and not really forward. So they're using the same kind of technique that DJI does for better stability when they just tilt their motors inwards a little bit. And it looks like that's the rear are like that and also the front. You can see how the front are tilted just a little bit in. So this is looking pretty darn amazing. I'm loving the look of it. Look at that stormtrooper type face. Man, I am the guy to really appreciate that. Because I love Star Wars and Stormtroopers. It looks like something out of um, the new Star Wars Stormtroopers. That's pretty darn awesome. And there's the camera. Let's take off this little foam uh, brace here. It's just a really high density foam. And looking at the camera itself, we got some air vents. It looks like it is a plastic or magnesium casing. But there is some accents of aluminum inside there. You see those? I'll pull it up as close as I can for a second while still staying in focus. And so we can get a really nice view of this three axis gimbal. It really does look pretty small and incredible. Very similar to something like the Mavic Air. Not quite like the Mavic Pro because the Mavic Pro has a one inch sensor and is bigger. But it does look very similar to like the regular Mavic or the Mavic Air camera. We've got the yaw axis up inside there. We have the pitch axis and then the roll axis. So it is a true three axis. And this is interesting. Check this out. So inside there we have these little rubber dampers. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. But they're just kind of floating there on the sides. And also there's four in the top. So like four little rubber guys to stabilize that shape. So looking pretty amazing. That front is so cool. So we're going to have supposedly obstacle avoidance in the front. There should be sensors along the front there. Let's spin it over to the back real quick. See what's up with the back. A light here as well. So three lights so far only on the back. Let's flip it over and see what the bottom looks like. Bottom looking very interesting. It's like an aluminum or magnesium with one optical flow vision sensor camera and also one sonic sensor for detecting the ground as well. So only one one. There's not two and two like the uh, DJI products do have more sensors on the bottom. So it'll be interesting to see how well this thing tracks the ground compared to the Evo and also the, the Mavic Pro. Kind of a black grate in there covering air vents there. There's an air vent there in the very back of the bottom as well. And then this is just going to wick away the heat because it is like all of one heat sink. And then there actually is a little slot here, very a little bit of a smaller slot in the front that actually looks like it's going to intake some air as well. No intake in the front. You know how DJI has their intake vents in the very front? I'm not seeing anything on this one except for a couple little slots down above the gimbal. So all the airflow looks like it's going to be going through here and out these two exhaust ports. I'm guessing this little bump here is probably the GPS module. They're keeping it kind of isolated there. We got the rubber feet there on those. And then very similar again to the Mavic. The back just has little feet here and they have some rubber guys as well. Allen hex screws, one, two, three, four on the bottom and a little bit of a seal there on this one so they can tell if you were tampering with it and opening it up. Okay, so all there's left to do now is open this thing up. So super simple, one, two, three, four. Here in a little satisfying click when we open up each arm and it just feels really sturdy. It feels on par with something like the Mavic Pro over there. Very, very on par, it's just white and a little bit of a different shape. You can see how the top edge is here are actually rounded for more of an aerodynamic feel. The bottom of the arms are a little more square and cut off. Nothing really going on on that side, spinning it around to the right side. There is a port here. Oh, there we go. Just kind of pushed it and slid it. Micro SD card, micro USB. That's a reset switch it looks like, reset button. 
And this little guy here looks like, oh, okay, you can choose to fly it with your Wi-Fi of your device on the left or push it over to the right and you're actually using the controller. Just one little door, snaps on nice and tight, and there we go. That's pretty flush and easy to deal with. Last thing we wanna do before we check out the controller is take off this battery. So we have two push-ins on the sides. Goes right up, nice and easy. You can see the slot it sits down in, very reminiscent of other drones. Again, I know I'm comparing it a lot, but it is competing directly with the guys um, right behind it you see there. So we really do need to do a few comparisons on how they look and perform. Anyway guys, here is the battery. So like I showed you before, press it once, gives you the battery status. Let's flip it around, very similar again. So many similarities to what's already out there. There's the port there where it's gonna plug in. And we wanna look at the battery stats. So I'm trying to get this in focus. We've got a 3.05 volt. So what is that, a 3S high voltage? Um, nominal is 11.4, yeah, so it is a 3S high voltage, 4,500 milliamp hour battery. So 4,500 is a pretty hefty battery, so that's probably why we can get, what they're claiming is the 33 uh, minute flight time. That's pretty hard to believe, but we are going to put it through the test. I'm gonna be cycling this battery probably about 10 times before I test that flight time test because we wanna have the battery in its optimal state. Just like other drones, just slide in from the top, push down, you hear the clicking, and those little tabs clicked in and you're ready to go. Okay, so we'll put the X8 on the side for a second. I'm just so excited. This thing is pretty darn neat so far. And let's pick up the controller and really inspect this guy. So there are the gimbals. As you can see, no sticks, but the sticks are nestled away right in here in this rubberized back pad. You see how they're just tucked in there? So again, very similar to another brand, which I'm going to stop talking about, which is back there on the left. <laughs> Um, and these just screw in. They're aluminum sticks with a kind of a rubber surround here. They feel very, very good. They have a little bit of attraction on the top, so it feels really good on my thumbs. The gimbals are a little tight, but they do feel fine. They feel okay. We got the black accented gimbal on this really smooth and nice looking white. Remember the Xiaomi 4K, the larger drone? It looks very reminiscent to that type of uh, smooth kind of texture. Now I haven't reviewed the A3 guys. I am planning on doing that, but Banggood, they just screwed up on my order on my shipping and I had to cancel the order. So I am gonna be getting that one in as well. Remember the A3, the cheaper version. So stay tuned for that review. Anyway, we have a, looks like a little button here on the left side. So we have a little quad picture on the left. We can slide it to right to return to home. Power button, we press it once. You see those lights come up. It's just about a little over half charged. Takeoff and landing button there, it looks like. A little joystick here that you can not really click in, just move around, we'll see how that operates. Two antennas, so this is gonna be your video signal and also your transmission control signal on these two antennas on top. And the way these guys go is that's as far forward as they can push, just about 90 degrees. You can push them all the way back and that's as far as they, they turn. So one, two, three. That's all the movement you can get out of them. Okay, flipping it over to the top, we have the two trigger rollers. So this is gonna be for your gimbal and also hopefully your exposure. This one just keeps rotating with some clicks in a very smooth type of rotation. It just keeps going. And this one actually has a, a stop and is spring loaded and snaps back. Okay guys, and flipping the controller to the back, we can see that we've got two buttons. So those are gonna be for some special functions. That really is about it, except for this bottom slot here. So we'll pull this thing open. You can actually, it's soft enough where you can actually open it up, I like that. Full size USB port, and then also the micro USB port for charging. See how they have the full size port on the bottom. So that's gonna plug in there and then go into your phone which actually sits right here, or looks like it could fit like a mini tablet, 
maybe even my iPad. I'll have to try it in there. Let me go ahead and put enough charge into this guy so I can just put my phone or tablet on here. I'm going to boot this guy up and we're going to look at the interface kind of in depth and just see what we can expect before we fly it. Okay guys, so I got the battery and the controller charging. I almost forgot I wanted to show you guys how to put on the propellers real quick uh, while that stuff's charging. Two are just going to be plain Jane on the top and two are going to have these little gray uh, dashes. So the gray dashes go on the arm that has the gray dash there. You see how there's a gray dash actually on the arm and this arm over here has no dash. Just put the tabs facing down really easy. I'm just going to kind of spin it until it falls in. So I'm pushing down and I'm turning that one clockwise, pulling it up. Very, very, very simple technique there. Opposite way around, pu push it over, push it down, that one's going counterclockwise, and it just pops up and locks. So again, exactly, it works exactly the same as other drones, but it is a very tried and true technique that works very good. So we've got another few inches before that'll fit. So looks like you're gonna have to use an iPad mini. This is the full size iPad Air 2, does not fit. So we'll go ahead and just continue on with the Android phone, usually with um, Wi-Fi drones like this. Um, or proprietary Wi-Fi, they usually want you to turn the drone on first. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll press, press and hold. And we're watching kind of the gimbal. Let me go ahead and focus that in for you. You see how the gimbal is kind of initiating itself. Up, down, looks good. I'm seeing some lights also on the arms. You can see green on the left and red on the right depending on which direction you are. There's the rear LED light, looking pretty fancy, a slow pulsing, and we'll go ahead and turn on the controller now, same way, press, press and hold. I felt two buzzes on my phone a few seconds later, and that light is now solid, so it looks like it's bound up, and actually these lights on the controller were red, and now they're white. So that's indicating that it's connected from the controller to the craft. And now all we need to do is let's launch our Femi Navi app. So pretty simple. We need to go down to our area, which is United States, our country, user agreement. Okay. And there we go. So it looks like we're going to need to log in to an account. It's definitely making it very DJI-esque where you have to create an account in order to fly this thing. So that'll bother some of you guys, but um, that looks like that's the direction that these drones are going. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. I haven't flown my um, Xiaomi 4K for a while, so I'm not even sure if I have an account or if it's a different account. It also does look like you can log in with your old um, Mi drone account, your Mi account. So I did create one there. You can also do Twitter or Facebook if you wanted to, and there's no sign in required. So I might just do Facebook perhaps, which is pretty darn simple. All I did was uh, click on Facebook, just go, go ahead and continue. And that's it. No putting any passwords or anything. So we'll allow it to access the OS, access device location. You're going to want to allow all that for it to work correctly. So there it is, Femi Navi. There's the Femi all closed up there in the app. And all we have to do is enter device. As easy as that. I'm not seeing any video yet, which is a little bit concerning. What I'll do is I'll shut everything down and I'll turn everything back on and let's see if it works this time. And let's try to enter device again. Let's cross our fingers and see if the video works. There we go, okay. So good to know, you may have to reboot everything um, a second time to get kind of everything working together after you log in. So I don't have a micro SD card, so you can see on the screen it says no card. and that's one of the things, just to be fair, I kind of razz on DJI about that, not including a little, some kind of micro SD card, memory card you can put on the drone to record 4K video. So I've got to say the same thing to Xiaomi or Femi. Sure it would be nice if they could just include like even a 16 gigabyte high speed card that would allow you to get just one flight at least of 4K video. This I can give a little bit of slack because 
they do kind of undercut the price a lot more than DJI. So they're, I mean, this is a four to $500 drone and with what you're getting and how premium it seems, I don't mind too much. DJI, I don't know, they still should, should give you something since they charge a premium price. Anyway guys, we wanna look at the interface really quick before we do anything else. Unable to enter GPS mode, please be careful. So that's probably because we're inside the house. We'll go into the settings real quick to see if we can change anything. We'll leave it on the uh, 10 meter flight speed right now, just because you know, we're, we're gonna do our initial review on this and I don't wanna be flying too fast and going all crazy for the initial one. Return to home height, so you can have it minimum 30 meters and you can go all the way up to 120 meters. Beginner mode on or off, so it's off by default if you wanna limit the distance and height. We have our sport mode, which we can change it into um, in the settings. In sport mode, the maximum flight speed is 18 meters per second. Then we have a mount of magnetic interference. So I haven't calibrated the compass. I'd recommend in all drones like this, calibrate that compass in the park or the flying area you are away from any metal or interference. Because we're getting quite a bit of interference in the house. You can see it's in the orange zone, two out of three bars. Fail safe, um, you can choose hover, land, or return to home. Always want return to home usually. This is pretty cool, check it out. An option that DJI now has and other drone manufacturers is precision landing. They're calling this one precise landing and you can turn that off and on, it's on by default. Oh, this is cool, okay, check this out. Update dynamic home point in smart track. So say you're on a boat and you wanna track something um, you can go ahead and have a dynamic home point. So there's no backward or side sensors on this craft, keep in mind, but you can enable backward flight in smart track. Active track is what DJI has. These guys are calling it smart track. Stick mode, let's see what different modes we can have. Mode one, two, and three. Cool, so we have this five directional button. This is what I was wondering about. Um, you can basically choose different functions for this thing to do. So it's got a dynamic um, battery return to home now, kind of like what DJI does. Okay, that's how we can change the map. So if you wanna see that satellite, you've gotta go into the settings and change it. Awesome, they do have a metric and imperial setting. I'm in the US, we use imperial, feet, miles, inches. A lot of you guys don't use that, but at least you have the option. Let's try a firmware update, see if it needs it. We've got a lot of different things here. It would wanna update. Flight controller, camera, gimbal, battery, RC, RC relay, vision, R FC relay, ESC, NFZs. Oh, so it looks like it does have, have a no-fly zone. It needs to update once in a while. Keep in mind. Ultrasonic sensor. So all those are updates. And I can't really do anything here. So I, apparently they don't need updates yet because this thing just came out. So if we tap away, there we go. Our whole screen disappears on our options. And we're ready to go. So that basically runs through everything, guys. We have a lot of options. Oh, except for up here. <laughs> so we've got all the camera options too. We'll just cycle through that really quick. This is gonna be a long video, but here we go. 2K, 1080, and it looks like 720. So those are your options for resolution. Remember, it's gonna record at 100 megabits per second. So get a fast card if you're gonna record in 4K. It doesn't do any 60 uh, frames per second, which the Autel Evo back there can do. Uh, remember, we're doing slight comparisons to what's out there on the market. White balance auto color is general. You have a few, a whole bunch of different options. Intelligent flight. Okay, this is a very important feature I almost overlooked. There we go, I was wondering what the intelligent flight is. So you see that little guy there? It's like a little robot head with antennas on it. So if I push that, we have auto takeoff, auto return, waypoint, smart track, orbit, tap fly, droney, spiral, SAR, SAR, that's interesting. It's like a rescue type of deal. Cinematic mode, awesome, tripod mode, course lock, and fixed wing. So anyway, guys, we got a lot of options here in Intelligent Flight, and we're gonna try to test as many of those in the next flight test. Um, the one thing I didn't try yet, guys, we tried pretty much everything except what we can on the table, except for these two buttons here. So the right trigger, I'm rotating it to the right. Nice, so that's changing our, is that our EV value? Yes, so on the fly, excellent, love that. It's changing our EV value quickly. So the left roller, this should be our gimbal, and we'll roll it to the left. That's how, that's maximum speed there going down, maximum speed going up. So you can see that there. 
So you can be really gentle with it. Let's see how gentle I can be. There we go, nice and slow. And remember, you can adjust that in your settings too if you want a more cinematic video. So the last thing we haven't tried are these two uh, buttons and the right one should be taking a photo. We don't have an SD card in there, but you just press the right, boom. It'll take a photo if you do have an SD card in there. And the left one, boom, it'll start and stop video. I'm so excited to get this out and flying. That's gonna be in the next video coming up very soon. I just like to go from start to finish and show you guys how it looks coming out of the box, what you're gonna deal with setting up. No updates yet, it's brand new, so there's no updates it seems. Um, I will let you know on the updates, but really looks promising right now, just out of the box. I'm not gonna be biased on this at all, but we do wanna kinda of compare it to some equivalent functioning um, drones like the Evo and the Mavic Pro 1 out on the market. Since those only have forward sensing obstacle avoidance and this also has only forward sensing obstacle avoidance, it'll be a good comparison. But you're coming in at four to $500 on this and you're coming in at eight hundred to a thousand on those so if you can almost half the price and have some pretty amazing functions um, we're going to find out if it's really worth it before you drop your money on something like this you really need to look at an in-depth review and see if it's even worth it compared to the other stuff that's out there and we're going to be testing this right after this in the next video as always guys links in the description for the x8 if you are interested in having a look at this and the specs and where to buy it from and how much it costs go ahead and check the link down below and next up, stay tuned and subscribe for the flight test, range test, and cinematic test. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I should probably stop saying DJI, but <laughs> I'll try not to say it too many times anymore.